In this video, we go over the process and considerations to promoting an Azure VM to a Windows Active Directory domain controller. I have a hybrid Windows AD Enter ID Lab that's a little dated. Coming up, we cover the steps to promote an Azure VM running Server 2025 to a domain controller. We also review some configuration items that are important when running a domain controller in Azure. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. That helps others discover this channel and is greatly appreciated. Check out my courses on hybrid identities with Windows AD and Enter ID, Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 with Intune Management, and my latest course, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, available at udemy.com. The links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. My home lab is in serious need of an update. The main server is a HP DL380 G7, these were released in 2010 and has an end of service of 2018. I also have a Ubiquiti network with a Raspberry Pi cloud controller that I lost access to a couple years ago. Shout out to some well-performing hardware. It's just always worked, but it's time to replace some equipment. The next few videos will be based on my efforts to update my hybrid lab. The first step is to upgrade the Azure domain controller and ultimately remove the domain controller on my home network so I can transition to new hardware. When I started planning this video, I thought it'd be simple. I've deployed many domain controllers over the past 25 years. However, once I got into the details, I realized there's more to it than just running DC promo. In the demo, we'll promote a server 2025 data center Azure Edition VM to a domain controller. But there are some considerations we need to be aware of before we jump in. I need to interrupt because I left out a step for production environments when I first recorded this video. It's important to disable disk caching on the disk that stores the AD database in Azure or on-premises. Disk caching is a way to speed up disk writes by committing them to a cache before writing them to the disk. Typically that's good, however, a cache is usually volatile. Data in the cache is lost if the hardware fails or loses power. We want to minimize any chance of losing transactions on an Active Directory database. The best practice is to put the database on a separate disk with disk caching disabled. Thanks to those who commented on the original video pointing out this step. Okay, back to the video. First, it's common practice to use domain controllers as DNS servers for internal name resolution. And a DNS server needs a static IP address. But we can't set a static IP address in the OS on Azure servers. The Azure Wire Server IP address hands out addresses with DHCP. And that's how Azure learns how to communicate with the Azure agent on the server. We can, however, set static IPs for the server in Azure. This acts like a DHCP reservation. The server will use DHCP, but always get the same IP address. Next, don't deallocate a domain controller running in Azure. You can shut it down and restart it from within the OS, but once it becomes a domain controller, don't deallocate or shut it down from the Azure management plane, including the Azure portal, Azure PowerShell, or the Azure CLI, for example. I'll leave a link below to more details, but the short version is the Active Directory database uses the VM generation ID and an invocation ID to track changes and manage the database. Deallocating the VM can reset the VM generation ID and invocation ID. That could lead to increased bandwidth usage, RID pool exhaustion, and it may mark the sysvol folder as non-authoritative. All fixable issues, but it's best just to avoid these problems in the first place. Next up, and this goes for any virtualized domain controller, don't rely on snapshots to back up Active Directory domain services. The only proper way to back up and recover an AD database is with an Active Directory aware backup tool like Windows Server Backup or a third party tool. Again, I'll leave more information below, but a snapshot recovery takes the database back in time and could introduce inconsistencies with objects in the database. Speaking of database recovery, don't forget to track those directory service restore mode passwords. They're unique to each server's database and are required to do a restore. And finally, if an environment has multiple Active Directory sites, you'll need to verify what site the new domain controller is going into. This should be automatic if the subnets are configured correctly in Windows AD sites and services. Next, let's review what's going to take place in the upcoming demo. This is a single forest, single domain with a mix of 2016 and 2019 domain controllers. The demo will promote a server 2025 data center Azure edition server to a domain controller. Before we do that, we'll set the IP address to static in Azure. Then we'll add the server to the domain and promote it to a domain controller. 
Next, we'll update the Azure Virtual Network with the new DNS server IP address. Once finished, we'll review the FISMO roles and move them to the new server. Let's jump into the Azure portal to get started. Let's start by adding the second disk for the AD database and disable disk caching. How you do this depends on if you're creating a new server or adding a drive to an existing server. We can create a new data disk when creating a VM from the disk page. From the disk page, we'll select create and attach a new disk. Select the disk type. This is where we'll store the AD database. Be sure the size and performance is correct for your environment. I also like to select the option to delete the disk with the VM. That way in the future, when we remove the VM, the disk will also be removed. We'll click OK. Here we can see our new data disk. Under host caching, let's change it to none. And from here, you can continue on to create the VM with the data disk attached. If you have an existing VM, you can add a data disk by going to the VM, then settings, disks. From here, we can create and attach a new disk, give it a name, select the storage type, select the size, and all the way to the right, be sure that host caching is set to none. That disables disk caching. Click apply and that will create the data disk with caching disabled. Once the new disk is attached, we need to create and format that disk. This is done the same way for any Windows server. We can start by going to disk management. We can get there by going to create and format hard disk partitions. We'll initialize the disk. It pops up by default once added. We'll click OK. That will initialize the disk. We can scroll down to find it. Right click, new simple volume. We can accept the defaults. We'll assign it the drive letter F. And we can change the volume label. Next, finish. And that creates the new disk we'll use for the Windows AD database. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's move on to setting a static IP address on the server. We need to leave the server OS set to DHCP. That's how Azure knows how to communicate with the server, by allocating its IP address. We can set a static IP address in Azure by going to Network Settings on the server. Select the Network Card, and go to the Network Card's IP configuration. We'll change the private IP address to static, we can set a different IP address if we want. This example, we'll leave it as 10.0.0.4. We'll click Save. And now the private IP address is set to static. It's now safe to use the server's IP address as a DNS server once the DNS services are installed. Here we are logged into the new server, running Server 2025 Data Center, Azure Edition. This will be the first 2025 domain controller in the mix. And let's get started with the next step, join a new server to the domain. We can do that from Server Manager by going to Local Server and select Work Group. From System Properties, we can go to Rename or Change the Computer Domain. Let's select Member of Domain and we'll add the domain. We need to authenticate to the domain. We'll do that by adding credentials of someone who has rights to join a computer to the domain. We'll click OK. And it's as simple as that. We get the welcome to the domain message. We'll click OK. And we get the message that we have to restart the computer for those changes to take effect. We'll click OK. Close system properties. And it'll ask us if we want to restart now. Let's do that. I'll pause the video while it reboots and come back once I'm logged back in. And we're back. I'm now logged in as a domain and enterprise admin. We need elevated credentials for the next step, promoting the server to a domain controller. We'll do that from Server Manager. We'll start the process by going to Add Roles and Features under Manage. You could also click Add Roles and Features on the Start page. We'll click Next until we get to Server Roles and we'll add Active Directory Domain Services. We get a prompt to add additional features. We're gonna click Yes or Add Features. We'll click Next to Features. They've been added. We'll go next to ADDS. We can click Next. At Confirmation, we'll click Install. This will take a minute to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. And we're back. 
the install finished, we can now close the Add Roles and Features wizard. And notice the yellow triangle at the top right. Let's click on that. It lets us know that there's some additional configuration required. Let's click Promote this server to a domain controller. We have three options. We can add the domain controller to an existing domain. We can add a new domain to an existing forest, or we can add a new forest. In this case, we're just adding a domain controller to an existing domain. The rest looks correct. Let's go next. For domain controller options, we'll leave DNS enabled, as well as make the server a global catalog server. Make sure the correct site is selected, and we'll need to add the directory service restore mode password. It's really important to record this password and keep it in a safe place. If you ever have to do a directory restore, you'll need this password. Once you have that entered and recorded, click Next. We can ignore the error about delegation of the authoritative parent zone. Click Next. And unless you have some specific reason to change these, the next few options you can just click Next. When you get to the path step, change the database path to the new data disk with disk caching disabled. For this example, I'm simply changing the drive letter. And we'll go all the way to prerequisite check. We get a message about the server not having a static IP address. That's fine for an Azure VM. Azure requires that the servers use DHCP, but we set the static IP address up in Azure. It will always get the same IP address. It behaves like a DHCP reservation. Looks like the rest is okay. We'll click install. And again, this will take a minute. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. It's done and it's forcing us to reboot. It rebooted and we're logging back in. And we're logged back in. Let's go to Tools, Active Directory Sites and Services. We'll go to Sites. The site is Azure, Servers, and there's our new server. That is how we promote a server to domain controller in Windows AD. We now have our new domain controller, which includes DNS and we have the domain controller set with a static IP address. The next step, let's change DNS settings on the VNet. Because the clients get their DNS settings from the VNet, we need to change DNS on the VNet so the clients get the new server's address. From the VNet, we'll go to DNS servers. It's set to custom. Default is the public Azure provided DNS servers. We want custom though, because we're using the private internal Windows AD DNS. All we have to do is add the new IP address to the list of DNS servers. And you can see it gives us the message that any existing VMs need to be restarted to get this new configuration. That's fine. Once we remove the old domain controller out of the domain, we can come back and delete the IP address for that domain controller. We'll click Save. And our new DNS server is added. Be sure to do this any place DHCP is handing out DNS server addresses. That could include other VNets or networks on premises. Here we are back on the new domain controller. Our next and last step is to transfer the FISMO roles to this new domain controller. First, let's find out where they're at. We can do this with PowerShell by going to Tools and Server Manager and select Active Directory Module for Windows PowerShell. We have a couple options from here. We can run the get ad domain command. That will return the infrastructure master. PDC emulator, and the RID master role, and then run get ad forest. Those are forest level roles that will return the domain naming master and schema master roles. Or we could run net dom query fsmo. And that returns all of them. That shows where they are. Next, we need to move these FISMO roles off the old domain controllers that will eventually be removed and onto the new one we just added. By the way, in large multi-forest domains, you may want to put a little more planning around moving FISMO roles. This is a single domain lab, so I'm not concerned with where the roles are placed. We can move the roles with the PowerShell command move AD directory server operation master role. I'll leave a link to more information below if you want to take that approach. For this example, I'm going to do it the manual way. First, from a command prompt or the PowerShell prompt, we'll register the schema management DLL. We need to register this DLL before we take the next step. That worked. We'll click OK. Next, we'll type in MMC. That opens a blank management console. 
From the file menu, select Add Remove Snap-In. Let's make the Snap-In a little wider. Select Active Directory Schema, Add, and then OK. From Active Directory Schema on the left, we'll right-click, change Active Directory Domain Controller. Select the domain controller you want to be the new Schema Master. In this case, it's DC11. We'll click OK. We can click OK at the warning message. Now we'll right-click, select Operation Master. From here, if we select Change, it will change the Schema Master role to the new server. We'll click Change, Yes, and OK. Now we can close. That's the manual way to change the Schema Master. Let's move the Domain Naming Master next. We can close this Management Console. We don't need to save it. Now if we go to Tools and Server Manager and select Active Directory Domains and Trusts, we'll right-click on Active Directory Domains and Trusts and change Active Directory Domain Controller. We'll select DC11. That's the server we want to transfer this role to. OK. Now we'll right-click on Active Directory Domains and Trusts again. Go to Operation Master. Here it shows the current Operation Master is DC2, and we want to change it to DC11. So we'll click Change, Yes to Verify, and that transfers the role. We can close that and we can close Active Directory Domains and Trusts. Next, we'll transfer the RID Master, PDC Emulator, and Infrastructure Master roles. We can do this from Active Directory Users and Computers. We'll go to Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. Right-click on Active Directory Users and Computers, and Change Domain Controller. Here again, we'll select the domain controller we want to transfer these roles to. In this case, it's DC11. OK. We'll right-click on Active Directory Users and Computers one more time, All Tasks, Operation Master, and here we can change the RID Master, PDC Emulator, and Infrastructure Master role. So we'll change, yes, OK, and we'll go to PDC, change, yes, OK, and Infrastructure Master, change, yes, OK. We can close that and close Active Directory Users and Computers. Now let's go back to the command prompt. Let's run the command netdom query fismo. Now all of our roles are set to DC11. That's how we set a static IP address in Azure, add a server to a domain, and promote it as a domain controller, update DNS in Azure, and move the fismo roles. I hope that helps you better understand how to add a Windows domain controller in Azure. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.